Hello everyone, welcome back to Coding with Jess. So today we'll be looking at another very interesting problem. It's called word break. So based on the few tech interviews I've had this year, this type of question has occurred a lot. Making a video on this type of question would definitely benefit us in general. So without further ado, let's get started. This problem itself is pretty simple. So you're given a non-empty string and a di dictionary, which contains a list of non-empty words. And your task is to determine if that string can be segmented into a space-separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. So for example, if you're given a string lead code, and your dictionary contains lead and code, and then your function should return true because lead code can be segmented as lead code. So now let's think about what's the most intuitive way to do this problem. Well, the most intuitive way would be using recursion, right? So you'll probably just be looping from the very beginning of the word and then see if your current position from the beginning of the word can be found in the dictionary. If you can't find it in the dictionary, then you basically just recursively call this function with the rest of the string and then see if that recursion eventually returns true, then it means your string could be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words. But let's talk about the runtime complexity of this solution. Say if you're given a string of a bunch of A, a bunch of letter A's, and then every prefix of this string is in the dictionary, then what, what are you going to do when you're using this solution? Well, then it means you'll have to call this function every time when, when you're in this string. So whenever you're looping, you will recursively call this function again and again. So in the worst case scenario, your runtime complexity for this most intuitive solution would be big O of n to the nth, which is not something we would like to see in a code interview. So let's think about how we could optimize that. We could see that one of the reasons that the previous solution is kind of redundant is because when doing recursion, we might be running on the same string over and over again. So to make it better, one way is to memorize those stuff. Say if you have seen that lead is part of the word dictionary, then you could just store that location in the string in a memory array saying that from the beginning up to this point, this could be segmented into one or more dictionary words. So this memorization solution definitely is better than the previous solution. The runtime is going to be big O of n squared when you're using memorization. But how about we do something different than memorization, but still very similar to it. Let's do dynamic programming. So what's dynamic programming? Dynamic programming is kind of divide and conquer. So if you have a big problem, you can divide it into subproblems and solve those subproblems, and then in the end, the answer that returns from the subproblem solves the big problem, which is something that we can definitely do on this problem. So to tell whether the word could be segmented into a bunch of words in the dictionary, you're basically looking at how to separate this word, right? So if you're looking at lead code, we know that if you separate lead from code, then lead code could be segmented into a bunch of words in the dictionary. So basically what we need to do is to say if you're at location index i and 
you want to know if index i at this location from index 0 to i, if that part of the string could be segmented into a bunch of words. So how do you tell whether this part could be segmented into a bunch of words? Well, what we could do is to partition from the very beginning to the very end of i and see if each partition could separate that word into a bunch of words in the dictionary. So that's the basic idea of how we could do it in a dynamic programming setting. We will need an extra array to store our dynamic programming values. Let's call it dp. And in the dp, we're going to initialize it to be a length of the given string s plus 1. And initially, what's in this dp array is going to be a bunch of false. So our dp array contains a bunch of boolean values, and we initiate it to be a bunch of false at first meaning that at each location in the string, we don't know whether at this location from index 0 to this location, if that point could be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words. So we initialize it with a bunch of false. And then let's think about our base case. So what's definitely going to be in the word dictionary? The null string is going to be in the word dictionary. So we initialize the first element, dp0, to be true. And now we can start partitioning the whole string and fill in our dp array. So we're going to loop from index equals 1 to the very end of the dp array. And then from index 0 to index i, what we're going to do is to partition from the very beginning, index 0, up to index i. And at every partitioning point, what we need to do is to check whether at this current position, whether in the dp array at this position is true, and whether the rest of the current string is in the word dictionary. So we're going to have another variable, call it j, and it's going to loop from index equals 0 up to index i. We'll need to check in the dp array whether at index equals j is true. So that means if it's true, that means from index equals 0 up to j, that part in the string could be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words. And after that, we also need to check whether the string from index equals j up to i, that part could be found in the dictionary. If it could be found in the dictionary and dpj is true, that means from index 0 up to index i, this part in the string could also be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words. In this if statement, we set dpi to be true. And that's basically it for our dynamic programming solution. At the very end of the solution, what we need to return is the very last element in our dp array. So at that location in the dp array, that spot means whether from index 0 to index basically the end of our string, whether the whole string could be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words. So as you can see, dynamic programming is actually not that hard to write. It might take some time to think of the solution and to figure out the range for i or for j, but once you have written down your idea or your pseudocode sort of it's actually very simple to implement. So now let's try implementing the dynamic programming solution. Something that I recommend doing is to have your pseudocode next to you so that you could just kind of just translate your pseudocode into actual code when typing your code out. The first thing that we need to do as usual is to check 
whether the given string is empty or not. So if not string, if it's a null or a empty string, then we could just simply return true. And then the next thing we're going to do is to create our DP array. So DP, then we initialize it with a bunch of false Boolean values. And the size of this DP array is going to be the same size of S plus 1. Because we need to also insert our base case for our DP array. And then we're going to initialize our base case, which is at dp0, and we initialize it to be true. And now we can start looping through the whole um, string. So for i in range, we're going to start from index equals 1 to the very end of the string. And we're going to have our j to partition from index 0 to i, so for j in range i. And we need to check if a j position in our dp array is true, meaning from 0 up to j could be segmented into a bunch of dictionary words and the rest of the string from 0 to i is also in the word dictionary. So, it, and s from j to up to i in word dict, if that's the case, then it means dpi. So from index equals 0 to up to i is true could be segmented. And then at the end, we return the last element, which is at length of s in our dp array, which means whether or not the whole string could be segmented. So now let's talk about the runtime and the space complexity of this dynamic programming solution. Since we're partitioning for every index within every index of the whole string, that means at each index, we're going to run from index equal to 0 up to this current index. In total, the runtime for this problem is going to be big O of n squared. And now let's talk about the space complexity. For our space complexity, since we're using a, an extra array to store our dp value, so our space complexity for this solution is going to be big O of n. All right, so that completes the solution to our word break problem. Please take a minute to try this problem on your own. I really recommend doing that because you know you learn by doing it and it's coding and it's a very popular question. And please feel free to leave any comments down below and hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Hope to talk to you soon in my next video. Bye.